Hello there, Michaelers. How are you guys doing, gals, guys and gals? How are you doing today? Well, it's been a kind of an exciting day. Can you believe I'm on live again already? I usually don't come on live this often. You know, like two days ago, put it on YouTube yesterday and then go live again today. So anyway, I'm going to wait for it. There you go. Wow, a lot of you guys popped up at one time. All right, we got some stuff to get to today. I got some updated forest lawn information. Um, I got some updated information on that Paris post, okay, that I told you guys that if if it got confirmed, I let you know, but if it didn't, I didn't want to read it to you. Well, guess what? It is taken off the internet. It is gone. It is gone. Now, I don't want to tell you what I did or who I contacted um, because I just want to kind of keep that a little private only because it is somebody that, yeah, yeah, it's all that, okay? And uh, I want to keep that a little bit private, uh, but I, it's, it's off. It's gone, okay? Now, was it true? Did she really say it? I think by making it, by uh, it being taken down, maybe it wasn't true, okay? Maybe she didn't say it, okay? All I know is that I put word out to somebody extremely important, and uh, the next thing I know, it's taken down, okay? And uh, the person that put it up there uh, said, oh, she was asked to take it down, okay? She was asked to take it down. And so you never know who you're messing with and you never know who knows who, okay? Or who really don't tell everything, okay? And so I'm so glad that it is down. So Paris did not apparently make a anti-Peter statement, anti-Pearl statement, okay? And if she did, it's it's gone. She don't want it out there, okay? So anyway, so thank you, Paris. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Um, um, then guess what? Then there was this, this weird, uh, there was this weird, uh, little thing that Paris did. Let's see. And then, she, and then she edited it. Now every, well, let me tell you, give you a backstory. Okay. You know that, um, uh, Peter Michael Bobby and Teresa are really close friends and they have been for years. And I'm, and, and, and me and him are close friends too. I just don't have the time that she has to give to him. So I'm grateful that she, you know, cause I think she's pretty cool. And, uh, I'm, so I'm grateful that she has kind of taken some of the, um, uh, uh, friendship, not taken my friendship, but kind of the time that he needs, um, to have someone around that she has become that person and me and her are close. Well, anyway, and he did that little clue for us in the mass singer, remember with the, the pearl and the shell and then the owls with Teresa. And that was fun on the mass singer, right? That was fun. All right. So if you want to know why I believe Bobby Anderson, Peter Madani is Michael Jackson. Please watch a live three and a live four that you can find on michaeljacksoninsider.com. Okay. Then you'll be like, oh, now I see. Oh, okay. 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 And Bobby Anderson is just a front. And I believe he's unmichaeling himself because the haters have dirtied up that name so badly that um, if he ever had to come back out or he ever was to come back, he can't say, yeah, that was me, Peter Madani, right? Because people be researching it and find all kinds of just lies and innuendos that people can twist up and all this other stuff. So just understand that. Okay, just understand what the circumstance is that he's in and the circumstances of the entire death hoax. Okay, but anyway, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to let you watch this and then I'm going to it kind of explain. I wonder if this has been changed too. Okay, it's Paris's Instagram and uh, uh oh, here it is. And it's from a cartoon. This is Jill. Of... This is my lady, Amy, little Susie, Brianna. You know why we call her Brianna, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. Shaniqua, Helga, Miss Kitty, Jeannie. I dream of the... Teresa. This is Teresa right here. 
All right. My ladies. All right. This is Jill. Okay. So, uh, but then when I reported that she wrote, did something with Teresa, and then the Insta story, but this link is still here. This is the original. But on the Insta story, it she edited, she took it down, and she re-edited and took out Teresa on it. Okay? Took out Teresa on it. So I'm not quite sure what exactly that means. <laughs> Uh, was it by accident? Like, oh, I didn't mean to leave a death hoax clue. Oh, let me let me make sure. Let me delete that. Or was she deleting it to let me know? Yeah, I got that other thing deleted. Hey, see, it's subliminal communications. It's a way to communicate subliminally. I'm just saying. I'm just guessing. I give the facts and then I give a little commentary afterwards. All right. So we think so that's so that's so that that's gone. Uh she says tickets for my tour run up silver sun pickups. So I guess she's going to be I might as well let you guys know. Give her a little plug, okay? So there's this Physical Thrills the new album out and they're supposed to be she, she has a link to some concerts. Okay? So uh tour dates, but I don't see her name on here. Um uh, but anyway, this is the link to silversunpickups.com and uh, she has this link. So I'm not sure if she's performing or not um, here, but she has a link for a reason. So she, she either really, really likes them or she is performing with them. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see tour. Let's see if I can find some more news. Let's see. Um... I know Paris likes to do stuff like that. Look, do drawings like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if if it's not quite clear, Paris, you know, if you're touring with them or not. So I don't know. But anyway, I'll go back to this. This is this is it. This is what's on her 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 um, thing. And and this is the link. And then some of the live concerts. Ticket for my tour run with Silver Sun Pickup. So apparently she's going to be on tour with them. Okay. So if you can, it's kind of like, it's not my kind of music and I'm way too old for this type of crowd. So if you guys want to go, please do. Okay. So that is handled. So, you know, the haters thought, oh, guess what I got, you know, and then this person, <sighs> That's why I don't give haters. That's why I mention their names in videos because I don't really want to give them the attention and I don't really want to give them the credit. But anyway, it's that, that's over. It's done. Blah, blah. OK, and so is the tweet. The tweet is down, too, except for somebody else still has a copy of the tweet up being disrespectful to what Paris's wishes are. I'm just saying. OK, um, uh, so let's go ahead and keep going here. Um, oh, before I get to the, the, okay. Uh, uh, oh, which one should I tell next? Okay. I, I think I want to, you know, I want to talk about John Bronca just for a second. You know, John Bronca does these cute little, um, and I think they're really good. He does these, um, let's do Instagram and then let's do John Bronca. He does these nice, uh, he does these nice, uh, like little videos, right? And he kind of tells kind of, you know, a lot of little stuff and says stuff like that. And then twice he's mentioned that he got kicked out of school, right? He got expelled from some school that I think he said the guy from the created Rolling Stones. Uh, here, here we go. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Let's go real quick. Being a lawyer, the untimely and unfortunate passing of Michael Jackson required me to start being more involved in management, which I obviously do for the Michael Jackson estate. And I help Barry Gibb and, and his running of the Bee Gees organization. I have a very role. Name, all sometimes in the game. it's negotiating. Sometimes it's legal. Sometimes it's management. Sometimes it's creative. Uh, one of the things I like to really stay up on is how uh, the world looking at Michael Jackson, how our ticket sales are doing on Broadway, how our ticket sales are doing in Las Vegas, really being careful with the scripts for our various projects, with the upcoming biopic with Graham King and John Logan. So my day is very varied. One of the most important things I do, though, every day is work out. Because if you, if, if you don't have a clear head and a, and a, and a healthy body, you're not going to be at your best. Well, my days have changed okay. over the years. Um, I used to be a traditional deal maker and lawyer. The un 
Okay. Did you guys know that Cecil's John Bronco was Cecil's dad's attorney? Just saying. Just saying. And he negotiated Cecil's dad's deal with CBS Records way back in the day. And that's why Cecil's dad's name is that it is in the thriller album. Just saying. Just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. But that's not the one that I wanted I uh, that that I wanted to uh um show you guys. Hold on a second. Uh I think it was Rolling Stones. Okay, this one with Rolling Stones. Okay, here we go. Of all time, the supposed 200 best vocalists of all time. First of all, let me mention Jan Wenner, the founder of Rolling Stone magazine, is a legend. This man created rock journalism. He and I happen to have gone to the same school, Chadwick. He probably graduated. I was expelled. I don't know what that means. But okay. So... Uh, twice he said that he got expelled. So John Bronco ain't no punk biatch. Okay, <laughs> just to let you know. I've met him. I talked to him. He's very mild, mild mannered. He's very nice. I've had several conversations with John Bronco, especially during when I covered the IRS case. And he was always very polite to me, very nice to me. We talked at the uh, Scream event as well. Um, and, um, and then, you know, somebody pushed him, whooshed him away from me. And then later on in the lobby, him and I talked one-on-one -on -one and, you know, just talked about certain things and stuff. So, um, but everything's cool. Everything, everything is everything. Okay. So nobody worry about anything. Okay. At this time, you know, there might be stuff to worry about later. Just saying. Okay. All right. So that's, that's that. All right. Um, now for the biopic. Okay, uh, let's see, the biopic, um, the biopic, all right, so there's a Michael Jackson biopic that's been rumored around for a few years, and it takes a long time for things to get done in Hollywood, right, and uh, so we've been waiting for a statement, uh, some kind of press announcement and everything, so it was supposed to come out yesterday, but it came out today, and it came out uh, that um, uh, Antoine Fuqua, is going to be uh, directing the MJ biopic. But before I get into that, I got to get into Prince. Okay, hold on. Prince had, oh, some MJ events, Germany, had released this before uh, yesterday. Okay, and it said uh, MJ, uh, MJ events, Germany. And I thank Pascual, uh, Pascal for, for uh, sending this to me. We received feedback from Prince Jackson yesterday that he will be involved in the entire creation process, process as well as the production of the biopic, Michael. Now, that's probably a working title. I'm wondering if that will change or not, but um, uh, that's the name for now. And therefore, we will not be able to confirm or cancel our event until the end of May. Uh, I don't know. G just can. I, I guess that's a typo. And um, um, as you can clearly imagine, this is far too short term for our planning, and we have to kick. We have to start ticket sales long in advance, and also flights, hotels, etc. Should be booked on time, and not only one to one to two weeks before the end. Therefore, we are happy that Prince has a say in the biopic and will accompany the whole production. But tell him at this point regarding. But tell him at this point, I don't know, off to our events because transparency is very important. We wanted to share this information. So apparently, Prince, who is into filmmaking, he used, he did a couple of Paris' uh, videos. And, um, uh, uh, and, um, uh, Oh, sorry, my mind went somewhere else real quick. And he did a couple of Paris' videos, so he's doing a good, you know, he's going to be probably a consultant on the film because he needs a check, too. He needs to get paid, too. <laughs> so, you know, so uh, good for you, Prince. And uh, so I'm happy about that. Now, John Logan, okay, he is, okay, let's let's go back to Frank, uh, uh, Anton Fuqua, okay? Anton Fuqua is a hell of a dude, okay? Now, he will not be available until the end of the year. He has to finish uh, doing some project he's currently working on. This is his Internet Movie Database uh, um, page, and I have an Internet Movie Database page, too. 
And uh, let's see, he did the Magnificent, Magnificent Seven. He did Training Day, The Equalizer, Southpaw. He did uh, The Residence, uh, Emancipation. Oh my God, with Will Smith. I don't have, what is that? Uh, not Disney Plus, what Apple Plus. I don't have that, so I need to get Apple Plus so I can watch it. Uh, Legacy, the true story of the L.A. Lakers. A Bullet Train, the Terminalist, the Guilty. I mean, he is just, he started out in music videos. And then he just blossomed into one of Hollywood's most successful and especially uh, a very successful African-American uh, black. is Fuqua, I don't know. Are you American? I, I, I know he don't have an accent. But uh, but anyway, and I think, is he still married to Sunshine? Let me see who his wife is, because I really like her. Okay, Anton Fuqua's wife. Anton Fuqua wife. Okay, uh, Layla Rashawn. Yep, Layla, Layla Rashawn is his wife, and they've been married for a lot of years, okay? And she is beautiful, Okay, let me show you her. You guys remember her. She was in a Harlem Nights, I think, and some other movies. Um, she was in uh, the movie with uh, Whitney Houston and, you know, a lot of other people. She was Sunshine in Harlem Nights. She got down on that part. She got down on that part. Okay, and she didn't put on a little weight, you know, so she's still cute, you know, she's really beautiful. Okay, but that's his wife. And uh, let's see, Waiting to Exhale. She was in Waiting to Exhale. That's the one I was thinking about. So she's been on a lot of stuff, but that's his wife, Layla Rashawn. And I think Jackie dated her. I think I've read somewhere that Jackie dated Layla Rashawn, too, at one point. Okay, so... Anyway, so let's get back to him. So he will be the director. And I am very, very happy that he's the director, right? And um, uh, he, he's in, and he's really good, okay? Um, but I am a little concerned about something. And I want to read it to you guys because I think it's a little bit better read um, than uh, me just saying it, okay? I'm going to read, this is what I'm concerned about, okay, with the biopic. Okay. MJ biopic writer is white man. Should we worry? Should we worry? Okay. Okay. Let me keep going. Newly announced director of MJ biopic Anton Fuqua is busy with another project. So production starts end of year, end of this year, giving Michael Jackson time to perfect the script, to be truthful. And I'm begging for the truth. I'm very relieved uh, production has not started. Yeah, because I, I was afraid that, oh, it's coming out in a month or two months or three months. But production hasn't even started. It won't start to the end of this year because the director, Antoine, Mr. Fuqua, is not available to the end of the year. Okay? Even though this is MJ's biopic, his father played an important role in his life. So that must be addressed. Please don't make Papa Joe the devil. Seriously. Okay, blacks need more uh, more black dads like Papa Joe. Not, not ex abusive, but actively involved. I want the truth about Papa Joe's discipline, determination, and yes, show some whoopings if you have to, but balance that out with Joseph Walter Jackson making his children's dreams come true. Beyond their wildest dreams, meeting presidents, kings, queens, and making it to the top. People tend to ignore how hard it is to achieve what Papa Joe and Catherine achieved with their children. Uh, gosh, review, I said, gosh, review their accomplishments. No other, no other family in the history of entertainment, even the world has achieved so much. Of course, it's not all roses, rainbows, and lollipops. Okay. It's all about how the story is told. The white power structure never wanted black fathers to raise successful children. That's a threat. And when Papa Joe did it, white supremacy embellished it, repeated it, twisted it as if that's all Papa Joe did. When the overwhelming majority is he worked very hard as their manager to ensure the success of his children. Families whooped their children back then. That's how discipline was rendered. And it worked on Catherine and Joseph's children who rose to the top of the entertainment of the world of entertainment despite getting their butts whipped to encourage them to be the best that they can. Growing up, I wish I was a member of the Jackson family and I would have taken some whoopings, whoopings I got anyway from my own mother to have parents who have parents involved, determined and relentless 
for the world to see my talent. Michael Jackson appreciated his father the older he got. It was MJ's white privileged friends who elevated an indoctrination. He was horribly abused by his father. I never saw any marks on any of the children. I never heard a police report for many of the children. They got their butts whipped and maybe sometimes it went too far. And as parents, none of us are perfect. Okay. Um, and, and please uh, look at your own children and see if they're as nice and giving and charitable and wonderful as the Jacksons are. I'm just saying. Black people would have uh black people would have told him, Michael, shut up, we got our butts whipped too. And and look at your life compared to mine, and shunned him for being ungrateful, further stating, at least you had a daddy that gave a crap, right? Um too many black families don't have a father, nor a father who had the inner strength and determination Joe had. It's very rare that anybody has that determination that Joe had. How lucky and, and, and to have great something to work with, talented children. But they're not the only talented family in the whole wide world. OK, so and Michael wasn't the only little boy that can sing and dance. There's plenty of kids that can. It was Joe and Joe's determination and Joe's discipline and his consistency that rose them to the top. How lucky the Jacksons were to have Joe because without that exact type of father, they'd just be uh, some generationally poor, large, poor black family from the ghetto getting into gangs, street drugs, and BS criminal activity like Unfortunately, too many have fell victim to the vicious cycle of hood dumb, hood dumb. OK, um, when I was in the 2005 trial and I sat directly and I mean directly like tap them on the shoulder, even though you weren't allowed to. But she would t Catherine would turn around and Joe and they would con converse with me um, um, when I was in, in the courtroom in the 2005 trial. And um, um, and there, there was a video. And Michael said that, you know, he, he liked being Michael Jackson. He was proud of his accomplishments. And he said, you take one whooping away and I might not be who I am. So Michael, Michael understood that you can't just make him who he is right now and then take away that history, take away Joe, take away those whoopings and expect the same outcome. Michael understood that he was who he was because of the discipline. And, and also Michael feared Joe. Hell, there was sometimes I feared my mama. Okay. If I did something wrong. Right. But Michael want, Michael's a goody two shoe. Michael's very sweet. Um, Janet's very sweet. Um, the boys did not get in a lot of trouble. Right. Um, each one of them had a gold record of some sort. Right. Jermaine on his own, uh, Jackson five, uh, the Jacksons, um, Reby with Centipede, uh, Janet, of course, Platinum, um, and um, um, and Latoya. I don't know if she ever had the gold record, but she had two best-selling books. Okay, so anybody you put you put your children next to the Jacksons, and they'll kick your butt with accomplishments. And how much money in charity did Michael give? How many kids and how many people have benefited off of the millions of dollars that Michael has donated to charity? So I, I, I really hope that this is not the only thing we're going to show with Joe was that Joe could kick Michael's ass. I, 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 please, please don't, Mr. John Logan. OK, because the history of black people and the psychology of black people, especially for black people born in the 1950s and raised in the 1960s, is a complicated psychological thing that only black people can really understand. OK, because we lived it and it's generational and we know what we said in the house. OK, and we know what happened in the house. Right. So I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried about this white person, because sometimes white people write scripts to make white people comfortable. We don't want white people to be uncomfortable. Right. So white people are comfortable thinking that Joe is a monster. OK, that makes them feel good. OK, that Joe's a monster. Okay, to get somebody to hate, okay, to separate, right? You know, Joe was not the better, but the greater good of Joe, goddamn, the greater good, huh? All of us here have experienced joy, excitement, and happiness through his children, through his children.
Okay, so therefore, that's what I'm mostly worried about. And also, I'm worried about how they're going to portray uh, Michael, of course. But we got a long time before, you know, I can't say everything. Right now, I'm worried about Joe. That's, that's what I'm worried about right now. Later on, when there's more to talk about, maybe I'll be concerned about something else. Okay, so anyway, with Anton Fuqua, I think he'll be able to add in and tell the director, hopefully, you know, no, we can't, we can't really do no black daddy hate. You know, we, we, we just can't, especially with this man's accomplishments. We can't. Now you want to show a little, a little butt whooping. And I remember Joe saying Catherine was the one who whooped the butt more because she was at home with the kids. Okay. So let's just, I, I, I'm, I'm just a little concerned. Okay. So we got that. So, um, um, so Prince is going to be involved. And of course he, he's the later years, of course. Okay. Um, what actor is going to play Michael? Oh my God. Are they going to hire several actors? I want my actor that was in A Prisoner of Fame to be uh, Michael. A Prisoner uh, of Fame, Pearl Jr., YouTube. <laughs> okay, let me let me pull that up so you guys can be reminded of, of him. Uh, here it is right here. Okay, I thought, and you fans, even with the haters out there, you, you fans still loved him. And I thought he was so good as Michael. He got to drop a couple pounds, though. Okay, uh, but anyway, this is Jack in my uh, short film, A Prisoner of Fame. The body of Austin Carlton, modified to your specifications. The body is way too cold. Uh, it had to be transferred in a semi-frozen state um, to serve for some months now. Having to motor systems, Here strokes actually. I think problem. No, it's fine. It's fine. I don't mind being thought of as a drug addict. It's um, it's fine. If this is the price of freedom, I'm okay with it. It's fine. Besides, it'll it'll be believable. I was once addicted to prescription meds. Debbie addicted you. Uh, my doctors purposefully got me addicted. So I would uh, continue to need them and pay them. So that's the price of fame. But uh, I'm all, all done with that now. So You've been through enough, Jack. Okay. You, um... Okay. So I, I think they should give him a chance, okay? I think that they should give Andre Philip Botello a chance, okay, to be in that role, okay, because I think he would be a great Michael. I don't know if he can sing or dance. I don't know. I don't know. But I know in this, he gave a great performance, and he's an actor that works. He works, okay, and he's not so well known that you're going to be thinking about somebody else while you're watching it. You know, he's just, he's, he's a working actor and he can make a living acting, but I vote for him to be Michael. We'll see. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. So now we get, we're going to get to Forest Lawn in a minute. Okay. So, uh, let's go back here and I want to show you guys something. Is this another wink, wink? Okay. Uh, a wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys know Peter Michael Bobby is Peter Madani, right? He goes by the name of Peter Madani, right? And this was Michael's pill bottle, okay? Peter pill bottle. See that address, 9255 Sunset Boulevard? So the estate, when they're talking about the biopic, the Michael Jackson biopic, right? Why they put their address down here? The MJ Online team on behalf of the estate of Michael Jackson. Okay, there it is right there. The same address. Now I already knew that that address was, was uh, belonged to the MJ Online team. It's not the first time I've matched that address. I've matched it before. Let me see. I should have pulled it up. I've matched it before. Let me see. Uh, let's see, 9255. Let's see if I have it. Mm, let me see if I saved it. Sometimes I don't know what I save things under, but I'm going to see if I, I saved it under the address. Because it, it has it has been uh, around that address. Uh, here we go. I think I have it. I have it. 
Uh, here we go. Okay, this it's here. Uh, it's coming up. It's coming up. My new computer, I got so much saved on it, you know. So, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come up, come up. So, I hope you guys are doing good today. It's kind of cold here in California right now. This was warm last year. This year, it's cold. Okay. Uh, come on. Come on. Uh, okay, let me, let me, where is it? I got, I got to pull it up again. I got to pull it up again. It's still going through whatever it's going through. Uh, okay, here we go. Now it's going to pull up. Okay, now it's going to pull up. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Nope, not that one. Then is it this one? Is it this one? No. I know I have it. I know I have it, but it's it's been around. Because that was a real address of Michael's. Okay, so apparently Michael still owns something there. Okay, MJJ Productions. Okay, here it is. Uh, MJJ Productions, Inc., 9255 West Sunset Boulevard, West Hollywood. And here it is. This was something that I saved a long time ago. But this is the address. So it's what's MJJ Productions, okay? So that is a real address, but I just find it awfully curious why they decided to put the physical address on the bottom of an email uh, when who sends snail mail? Unless it's a package, unless it's something that I can't give to you via e internet. I just find it a little bit suspicious that they decided to add the address at the end. Okay? And uh, and I, I don't know if you guys have um, another email or something from them. Because I'm looking at other emails that I have saved. And it doesn't have the address on the bottom. So if you guys have something that has the address on the bottom other than this one, send it to me. Okay, send it to me. Let me know. All right. But I found it very curious that they put that address that happens to be on the Michael Jackson alias name, Peter Madani. Okay, just saying, just saying. It's a fact that that happened. Okay, so we're happy about that. Um, let's see. Uh, involvement MJ biopic consultant. Let's see. All right. So now Angie, my friend Angie. Um, Angie's going through a little tough time and I've been praying for her. And uh, so anyway, she has posted something and, um, and she told me I can share it. And I don't think I want to share her full name. Okay. Because um, uh, haters just are not good people. <laughs> They're just not good people. Okay. So anyway, so today she decided to call for us on today. And here is what happened. Okay. Uh, what's this? Something, somebody's pulling up. Hold on. Something came up. It, this is, this, this being in Peter's group, I already blocked him. Oh, somebody else pulling up some hate. Um, I'll, I'll get that. I'll get to that in a minute. Let me close that for now. I'll get to that in a minute. So I called cause you were mentioning on, uh, on live, Cynthia told me there is no information of Cynthia, I guess at Forest Lawn, told me there is no information she can give me on that. I said, well, does that mean that Michael isn't at your Forest Lawn facility? And she said, I cannot confirm that. So I said, on September 3rd, 2009, we all watched the service there at your facility. So there is no secret. She, uh, she said, I'm, uh, there's no secret. She said, I'm sorry. I'm unable to confirm that Michael Jackson Jackson is here, but you are welcome to visit our grounds. I said, I don't want to visit the grounds. I want to see Michael Jackson's burial site. Isn't it in Holly Terrace? She said, again, I am unable to confirm, but you are welcome to visit our grounds. Thirteen and a half years later, Michael's not dead and he's not buried there and he's not cremated either. And the reason why the cremation story came from a source supposedly from supposedly ah, supposedly from uh, from uh, Catherine 
And the reason why it didn't come directly from Catherine, because it's a record. If you get somebody cremated, there's records of people being cremated. You can't just cremate people and not have a record of somebody cremate somebody cremated. And if the and if the ashes were saved so that they could go to Forest Lawn and be spread under a pear tree, you need a you need a you need a license for that. You have to buy a license because I have my mother's ashes because my mother wanted to be cremated, and you have to pay for a permit, okay, to have ashes to take them, okay? So that's why it came, it, it, there's no cremation of Michael Jackson. There's no burial of Michael Jackson because Michael Jackson is not dead. And you know that if he's dead, what the heck is the secret of confirming he's there is not there because there's never been a break in at Forest Lawn and there's a video camera in front of the entrance to Holly Terrace. And if you get too close, somebody will come over the speaker and tell you to move back. You can't look in the window. It's black. You can't even see in there. It's locked. You can't get in the building. And if you walk past where he is, there's a motion sensor that tells you to step back and there's still no name on that crypt. And it's not listed in the database. These are all facts, okay? The last time I checked, there was no name still on that crypt. So anybody that knows this information and still wants to believe Michael is dead, you want him dead. You prefer him dead. It's just that simple. You prefer him dead or you're scared to go up against the Jacksons because you think they're not going to like you, okay? Because you, you, you're you part of the believer community. I, I got pictures with the Jacksons. After my suicide book came out May 2010, in June, I'm helping Catherine pro promote her book at the MJ Tribute event. Um, I'm, 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 I was asked to help promote the MJ Tribute event in which she was promoting her book, Never Can Say Goodbye, where the promo code was MJ Lips. Please watch my live docuseries, please, okay? Um, 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 yeah, so no name on the crypt, not listed there, Forest Lawn. Okay, and then I had called Forest Lawn, I called Forest Lawn myself, okay, in May, October, oh no, excuse me, October, September, October, somewhere around there, 2009, it was after the burial ceremony, and in, and that day, a Forest Lawn employee told me that the Jacksons paid for every Forest Lawn employee to take the day off, okay, and their own people, they rented out the entire facility and paid for them to take their, that's why the bill was a million bucks, okay? That's why the Forest Lawn bill was so much, $590,000 for the crypt, okay? Michael ain't putting $590,000, a lot of money, okay? Then uh, um, um, they paid for, to be able to put nothing in there. And they didn't want any Forest Lawn employee. But Forest Lawn said, we don't have we don't have Michael's body and we've never had it. And that's what they told me. Okay. So here, here we go. I did not um, record the conversation that I had with Forest Lawn. I did not record it. Um, but somebody else recorded that conversation. And here it is. It is on, I've played this before, Michael Jackson death hoax, a bogus death certificate. Okay. So here we go. When the death certificate says Michael's body was brought to Forest Lawn on July 7, 2009, but Forest Lawn disagrees. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm sorry to bother you. Um, I'm hoping you might be able to give me some information on, um, I would like to send some flowers for Michael Jackson's site, but I was told that you don't have any information about that. That's right. So he... I would not be able to send flowers to him at that location. Is he perhaps at another location? No, he's not at Forest Lawn, period. He's not here at Forest Lawn. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh... <laughs> so, uh, I, as a reporter, I'm supposed to just ignore that, right? And I'm just supposed to go, no, I don't see anything. I'm dumb. I don't, I don't understand anything, right? I am a truth seeker, right? We have nothing that tells us that Michael Joe Jackson is dead. Nothing, nothing. And 13 years later, this, 
people are still, Forest Lawn is still gone. Uh, it's private. We can't say, we can't confirm, we can't deny. Uh, 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 uh. Okay? So I thank Angela for calling Forest Lawn and talking to a Cynthia. Okay? There. And, uh, and they tell, tell her, look, no matter what, we can't, we can't, we can't confirm he's here. Cause he's not. He's not. And there's no such thing as somebody breaking in to, the, to get a casket, go in to what, to see a, 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 a stone, a, a block of stone. You can't lift that up. <laughs> Steal the body. That's, that's absurd. It's absurd. What you going to get now, 13 years later, pick, pick up a body that's going to crumple in your hands or it's supposed to be embalmed. Who knows? Okay, well, how are you going to get out of Forest Lawn? Do you know how it's way, way in Forest Lawn? Do you know? It's, you can't even walk out of there. Okay? And if somebody sees you going in or if the door opens, there's an alarm. It, you just can't break into Forest Lawn. You just can't. Okay? So, anyway, so I thank Angela for that, for, for uh, sending that to me. I didn't call Forest Lawn, okay, today. I did not call. I called Forest Lawn many times previously but i remember in 09 when i believed that michael jackson was dead right when i believed that they said we don't have michael's body and we ain't never had it what huh, huh? right but so what's up with the coroner creating a death certificate saying the body's at forest lawn and forest lawn is going nope mm -mm, not here sorry the coroner is a liar the coroner is a liar because he lied about how he named and identified the dead body with the driver's license. And the name is Michael Joseph Jackson. And TMZ released a picture of Michael's last uh, driver's license, the, what they give the public. Right? And his name was Michael Joe Jackson then. FBI file it says Michael Joe Jackson. And his application, Michael Joe Jackson. And for and and the coroner told me I sent all driver's licenses back to the Sacramento Department of Motor Vehicles. So thank you. So I took that little letter, went to the California, uh, the Sacramento, California uh, Department of Motor Vehicles, and they like, oh, you already sent us the driver's license. Why you want to know? Because I sent them the copies of what I had. Then I get a letter saying, no, nah, we ain't got it. <laughs> we don't have it. Okay. And then uh, the, the death certificate says it's, he's buried there at Forest Lawn. And then what about Karen Fay, Michael Bush, and Dennis Tompkins saying they went to Forest Lawn to dress the body for nine hours? Nine hours? And Karen said there was a rip on the lip. They took the eyes out, but I went over. They put little caps on the eyes. Oh, his hair with scalp was ripped, but they cut the scalp from the back. And he pulled it over to get some of the brain out. So how bad you put the scalp back and you just go like this and then the face is back. You know, so nine hours and then a duplicate of the same outfit. The outfit that Michael wore with all the pearls on it. All the pearls, like my name. All the pearls on it, the white one, where Janet introduced and said she loves her brother so much. Remember that? That's the outfit that Dennis Tompkins and Michael Bush said they buried Michael in. But whoa, 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 not that exact outfit. We duplicated that outfit. Michael didn't wear the same outfit on, on, on uh, special occasions or on public outings. He got a new outfit for the public outings. Okay. Now, Michael would wear the same clothes at home and the same jeans and same pajamas and same t-shirts at home. But when he went out, he always had something new. So how come Dennis Tompkins and Michael Bush, Dennis Tompkins passed away, rest in peace. But how come Michael Bush said they made the same outfit in a duplicate and said that was the outfit? Why would you do, Michael would want to bury in his, in, uh, and the casket would never open? <laughs> and the casket wasn't open? But I'm supposed to be the bad guy because I, I took notice, right? of the obvious, right? Right? So I'm just saying, a duplicate, you know why? They they said duplicate outfit? Because they didn't want the real outfit to show up. They like, uh-uh, this is a trick bag. We better say it's a duplicate. 
Because what if that outfit shows up somewhere, right? Because they know that, 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 that they didn't do that. Nine hours. Who wants to be with a corpse for nine hours? Anyway, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. I, so people lying, okay? And then Latoya supposedly went to Forest Lawn as well in early August, 09, to get a hair sample. But the ham was exposed and then a little bit and then she took a hair sample. But the results of the hair sample were never released because the hair sample would have showed uh, um, um, what, six weeks of Dr. Klein giving Michael Demerol. And there were no, no Demerol was found in the system. That body was not Michael Jackson's. Okay, it was not Michael Jackson's, just like the police detective said. That I'm looking, he said, I'm sitting here looking at it in the body, don't look nothing like him. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, Michael faked his death, and don't you ever think he didn't. Okay. Um, uh, because all this stuff, all these years has remained the same and has remained unchanged. Okay. So we are happy. Let's see what else, if I have some more stuff here. Um, no, that's it. That's it. So we wait for the uh, biopic. And uh, so somebody black needs to be consulted on that script. Somebody black needs to be on. Uh, I'm not saying that John Logan can't write a good script. I'm sure he can. But can you ca ca capture the essence of being a black American, an African-American? Can you catch the essence of that? And I think he needs some call. Maybe he already got some consultation. Maybe he already got some of, did I write this right? Did I get this quite right? You know what I mean? Because Michael first message to us was if Martin Luther King was living, he wouldn't let this be. So Michael's talking about racism. A lot of his songs, they don't care about us as racism. Um, scream. Um, um, Michael talked about escape. He talked, and he thought most of the persecution with the Al uh, Sharpton event, remember when he said, when he started breaking records, this, that, and the other, and that's when they came after him. All right. Now, Michael, yeah, Michael gave him ammunition by having, hanging around little kids, girls and boys, you know, so he gave him the ammunition, right? And the people around him should have said, you better stop. But no, Karen Faye said, they don't know your heart like I do. You can do what you want. And then after that, then the trial that almost locked him up for 20 years. Okay. So there were people in Michael's ear. That was giving him bad advice and telling him that it's okay when they're they're after you. They're gonna get you, okay? You know, grow up now. You had enough time getting back your childhood. Grow up, okay? And then Michael in the song, "Have you seen my childhood?" Yeah, we saw it. <laughs> we saw it. It looked pretty damn awesome to me, okay? It looked uh, pretty awesome. And Michael wanted, don't think for a minute, Michael didn't want to be the success that he became. Michael was obsessed as a little kid to be as successful as he is. I read somewhere that every time Michael would jump in the pool, he would say a prayer for the, to have the number one uh, biggest selling album in the world as a child before he did his somersault into his uh, bomb into the pool, right? Right? So Michael wanted it too. Okay, and Joe, he knew how to instill that ambition, that resolve, and so did Catherine in their children, and it worked. No other family in the history of the world has attained, had nine children that attained this much success. Okay, so Joe did something right, and I want more black fathers to take an active role in raising their children. Because we don't have enough black fathers as it is. And all we need is another worldwide movie uh, to say black fathers are the devil. Okay. So I worry about that message. I really do. Because that's a bad message for us as a group of people. Right. So that's why I care. That's why I care. Because I'm still an activist. A lot of you guys don't Who know. Who says you have to spend I'm more still on an to get results? Hold on. I power up. Um, I was an activist and an author before I met Michael. Before, not, yeah, before I met Michael, before I came, got involved in the 2005 trial. 
Um, and I still have it in me to this day. All right. So I'd like to thank a couple of people. Uh, Black Dolls Matter. They sent me a card. Thank you so much. I just got it. It's a Happy New Year's card. And she loves her 10 billion. Her, uh, her 10 billion, which is, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I can't reach it fast enough. Uh, 10 billion. Let's see. I can't reach it. It's up there. But anyway, uh, the stays all day shay. Okay. The stays all day shay. And order your sing on socks. Order your sing on socks. Okay. Uh, it's really a good fragrance. Okay. I found, I found a good, a good one. I knew how to mix it a little bit better. All right. And I also like to thank my friend Joni. Thank you, Joni. Thank you so much. She's a, she's really a Prince, Prince fan. Today, somebody filed, okay, Prince, um, you know, I've been like sidebarring with um, a couple of people, Joni and Dots, Connect the Purple Dots, and they've been kind of investigating to see if Prince Rogers Nelson faked his death, right? And even though I'm not like convinced or, or whatever, but I want to hear it out because you never know, right? You have an open mind, you hear it out, right? So today, uh, Dots uh, 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 texted me and he said that there's been um, something filed in a petition filed in Prince's probate case and Prince's probate is already closed. Money has dispersed. Michael's probate is still open. So money is still in Michael's possession. Okay. And every, every dollar that's spent from that estate is either cost of doing business or a loan to Catherine based off of her inheritance or the kids money that they made when they were uh, minors. That is the money that has been dispersed out. Okay. And so all this money is really loans. And so when probate comes, then you deduct all the loans that have been given to you from your inheritance, right? So, um, uh, but anyway, so Prince's probate is closed, but somebody filed a petition today saying that they're really Prince and that Prince is still, uh, that, that uh, since they're Prince, Prince didn't die and I faked my death or something. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Let me see. He sent me a link. Oh, man, the link is on my phone. Mm -hmm. So I can't get it. But anyway, so uh, let's see. Uh, Carver, let me see. Carver County. Do you guys care? Carver County. Uh, Prince Rogers Nelson case file. Okay, so uh, public records. Oh, it's gonna be too much. It's gonna it's gonna cost me. It's oh, here we go. Here it is, right here. Let's see. Let's see if I can pull it up. Okay. Um, here it is. Receive updates. Uh, here it is. A written statement. I found it. I found it. I found it. It. Thank you, Dots, for sending this to me. Uh, somebody. Minnesota, because that's where Prince lived, and uh, Prince Rogers Nelson, decedent, and that's what we give for Michael, too. My name is Orlando uh, Enox, known as Prince Rogers Nelson. I have a valid claim to this estate. My address is, and the estate is or will become indebted to me in the amount of $146 million. So he says, the nature of the claim is, I am Prince Rogers Nelson. I go by the name of Orlando Enox. I am claiming my estate. I am alive. I was sick April 2016 and misreported dead by the Carver County Sheriff. That is awfully weird, right? Uh, the, uh, the claim arose prior to my death of the deceit on or about, and then you have all this stuff here. So under penalty of perjury, but it's not signed, no. So who filed this? It ain't signed. So it's not signed, so it's not under penalty of perjury. So, and that was on the 13th that this was filed, okay? So anything can be filed. Anything can be filed. I don't think there's any truth to it, but I told Docs to keep me informed in case it is true, even though I, I have like zero uh, confidence in it. But hey, you never know. You never know. With Michael, I've seen, you know, the truth is stranger than fiction, right? 
So anyway, so I thank Joni and I thank Black Dolls Matter. Um, I don't know what she says her name. Mark. Mark. So thank you so much for the card. Thank you so much for the card. And thank, and then Joni and um, Nelson, she had a dog. He unfortunately passed away. Oh, I'm sorry, Joni. She's so sad. And um, uh, but that that was that was her dog, and he, she named him Nelson. That's how much of a fan she is of, of Prince. So anyway, guys, I will uh, talk to you later. So it was nice coming on live with you guys. All right, let me let me spend a moment. Let's see. Let's see. No questions. No questions. No questions. Nope. No questions. Okay, guys. I will talk to you later. Be sure to order Stays All Day Shea because that uh, fragrance body butter because that is going to help me make a live five Michael Jackson survives the world watched but didn't see. And then also I'm I'm trying to, you know, get money any way I can to do a live five because me and Cecil got to take work, take off work and our equipment's getting a little old. So we got to replace some equipment. And um, um, so um, I'm trying to save up money so we can so Cecil doesn't have to work and we can make a live five. OK, so um, if you want to donate, you know, you can ask me about my PayPal account. You can donate buy buy some shea butter. Um, and, um, buy, of course, the Alive docu-series, okay? So, anyway, guys, I love you all, and I will talk to you next time. Go to michaeljacksoninsider.com. Bye-bye.